This is Frank Delaglio. It's December 19th, 2017 at UConn. Today we're going to look through the details of converting non-uniformly sampled data and processing it with the latest tools in NMR Pipe. When we use these tools in the NMR box environment, the first thing we do is start a C shell because all the NMR Pipe tools need the C shell environment in order to work properly. So from the command line, I'll type CSH, and that will start our C shell. In the NMR pipe workflow, the first thing that we do is create a script that converts data from the spectrometer format to the NMR pipe format. The graphical interface that we use to do this is called Bruker for Bruker data and correspondingly Varian for Varian data. This example is N15 edited NOE data recorded on a Bruker spectrometer. So I'm going to begin by typing the command Bruker at the command line. And that will give us this interactive graphical interface that will read the parameter files from the spectrometer format data and build a Unix shell script that will convert the data into the NMR pipe format. As input, we have the binary spectrometer data, which in the case of Bruker data is the binary file SER. And in the case of non-uniformly sampled data, we also have as part of the input the non-uniform sampling schedule, which in this case is a text file called NUSLIST. So I'll select that as input. The conversion script that we create will establish chemical shift calibration parameters. And by default, NMR pipe does this by assuming that the directly detected dimension is centered at water. And so it will read the temperature of acquisition from the spectrometer parameter file. And that's specified in this setting here. And then assuming that the center of the directly detected dimension is at water, when we read the spectrometer parameters, it will establish the chemical shift of water at the given temperature and then propagate that chemical shift calibration information to the other dimensions. From time to time, the temperature recorded in the parameter file does not match the temperature that was actually used for the acquisition. So in these cases, I can type in a temperature manually, set the center position in PPM to H2O, the way it was when we started the interface, and then I'll read the parameters a second time and that will calculate a new chemical shift at the temperature that we entered manually, and that chemical shift calibration will be propagated to the other dimensions. Sometimes these parameters need other adjustments. The ones that we need to pay attention to are highlighted in yellow. In this particular case, the parameters are all set up nicely. We have the amide proton, directly detected dimension, the intermediate dimension that we call the y-axis in NMR pipe, that's the N15 dimension, and then the final axis, the z-axis, is the indirect proton dimension of this NOE experiment. You will also notice that there's a new checkbox in this interface that says run NMR draw in process mode after conversion. So I'm going to click that and after conversion is done that will start the NMR draw graphical interface with a new processing environment for generating processing schemes for conventional and non-uniformly sampled data. So I'll save this processing script on the disk and then execute it to convert the data from the spectrometer format to the NMR pipe format. And when the conversion is done, the NMR draw program will be run with this new graphical interface. The parameter window for processing is on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have the spectral data. So by default we're looking at the first 2D plane of the 3D time domain data and if I use the mouse wheel I can scroll through different planes and we can see that some of these vectors are empty those are the ones that were skipped over in the non-uniformly sampled scheme. So I'm going to move to plane number one 
and choose the first 1D slice from this data. So this is the first slice and maybe the second slice from this data. Under the processing menu, I'll use the command called auto process 1D, and that will create a spectrum from this 1D data set that we can use to make an initial phase correction for the directly detected dimension. So in the command panel, we can turn on interactive phasing with this button, and then the sliders are active to adjust phase. I can drag the slider to adjust the phase continuously, or click on the slider to increment or decrement the phase value. So here's the phase correction value that I've established. And if you look at the processing window, you can see that that parameter has been inserted in the command line entry. So in a typical workflow, we recommend that when you work with non-uniformly sampled data, that you do a complete ordinary FT of the data so that you can first establish that phase correction and Fourier transform options are set correctly before you process the spectral data. So that's what we'll do. I'll press this button that will create a processing script for this spectral data. And there are buttons in this interface. The Edit FT button will let us see the script that does a regular FT on this non-uniformly sampled data. And in this script, you can see the script generation command, in this case, basic FT3, that was used to generate the processing scheme, and then the processing scheme itself. So that's been generated automatically, and now I can execute that Fourier transform scheme with this button, execute FT. In the case of 3D data, when we look at planes from the 3D data, which we're doing now, it might be hard to kind of fathom what's happening. So as a convenience, there are buttons in this interface will let us see the 2D XY projection of this 3D data and the 2D XZ projection of this 3D data. So when I look at these projections, I notice two things. When I look at the proton nitrogen dimension, I can see that this nitrogen dimension looks like it's about 90 degrees out of phase. This is a common circumstance for gradient enhanced data, so I will set the phase correction value to exactly minus 90 for the nitrogen direction. And when I look at the XZ projection, I see that for this NOE dimension, the 1H dimension, that the first and second halves of the data are exchanged. When that happens, we need the special Fourier transform option that alternates the sign of every other point before FT, which will have the effect of rotating these two halves of the data. That's this checkbox here in the interface. So I've adjusted the phase correction and Fourier transform options. I'll press the update button to generate a new processing script and press the Execute FT button in order to perform the regular FT on this data. So here's the spectral data. Here's the XY projection, which looks great. Here's the XZ projection, which also looks really good. So now that we've set both the phase correction options and Fourier transform options for all of the dimensions, we're ready to do a complete non-uniform sampling reconstruction. So the first thing that we're going to do is try the SMILE reconstruction technique. So I'll set SMILE as a reconstruction technique here, update the scripts, and now this time I'll press the button that says Execute Non-Uniform Sampling. Execute NUS, and that will execute a SMILE reconstruction script. And that will be very quick. The reconstruction is finished. 
And when the final result is saved, we'll be able to look at the planes. So here are planes from this data. I can look at the XY projection, which is very nice. And the XZ projection, which is also really nice. And then finally, we can look at strips from this data. The strip display is generated by taking the 2D proton nitrogen projection and peak picking the largest peaks and then extracting pairs of strips at each position. So one strip is extracted along the MI proton dimension and another strip is extracted in the orthogonal dimension along the nitrogen dimension. And this gives us a nice overview of the data in all positions and all places. So here's the smile result. We can exit this strip viewer. And now, if we want to, we can try a different reconstruction technique. If we look at the conversion script that we've generated, the command to run NMR draw with this new process mode is actually inside the conversion script. So I'm going to use that command and I'm going to add an extra argument which enables us to use additional reconstruction methods and that argument is extra nos. This allows us to use reconstruction methods that are not installed as part of NMR pipe, but they are only available on NMR box. And so now when I use this under the reconstruction methods I have to choose from, I also get an option for Roland NMR Toolkit Maximum Entropy Reconstruction. And so we can go through the steps like before, choose a 1D, process it, quickly choose phase correction parameters, update the corresponding script, and now I'll execute the non-uniform sampling script. And if we want to, we can see what this maxent script looks like. And it's actually pretty simple. It just runs a script called maxent 3D with the different parameters like the phase correction values that we've determined. So I'll execute that scheme. And now the maxent processing will carry through. The maximum entropy processing happens in two stages. The first stage is a maximum entropy reconstruction with the intent of optimizing the parameters that we need for a final maximum entropy reconstruction. So as an initial step, the NMR pipe format data is being converted into a format that can be used by the Roland NMR toolkit. And now the first round of maximum entropy processing is occurring. And this will enable us to determine the lambda parameter, which describes the balance between minimizing the chi-square difference between the maximum entropy reconstruction and the original data, and maximizing the entropy of the corresponding reconstruction. And now that that parameter lambda has been determined, we're doing a complete reconstruction on the data, which finishes very quickly. And now we're converting back from the Roland Toolkit format back into the NMR pipe format. And here I'm 
3D results. This time I press the button to display strips. We'll see the new maximum entropy result side by side with the previous result that we generated with the SMILE reconstruction technique. Simple and beautiful. So those are the steps that we need to reconstruct non-uniformic sample data with NMRPy. You saw it first on NMRBox.